Hi friends, strangers, internet. My name is Emily Hanhan. I love colorful makeup and colorful language. Today I'm here with an art inspired shop my stash in collaboration with Mia from Mia's Virtual Vanity. My dear friend Mia does these art inspired shop my stash videos and they are so fascinating and enjoyable to watch and I'm so happy to be collaborating with her today. And I definitely recommend you going and checking out her video that's going to be up today as well based on this painting and any of her previous videos they are all such a joy to watch so today i'm creating a look inspired by the painting a letter from my bow by konstantin razumov the look i'm building today is inspired by the look that's actually on the uh, dancers faces the deep red lip the very striking blush and the smoky eye. So first up are a few tools. We have the Shop Missé pop off sponge. This is just an amazing sponge for applying foundation and concealer in a light blendable fashion. Then I have a palette that I'm going to be using to mix cream blush with. This is the NYX Born to Glow foundation. I picked this one out because it has a soft sheen to it and it is the kind of milkiest tone in my collection that still generally matches me and I feel like it matches the tone and sheen of the painting subject that I'm referencing. We have the Too Faced Born This Way concealer in the shade Cloud, which again is a milky tone that I can use to correct as needed. This is the Urban Decay Vice Cream Lipstick in the color Gash. This I'm going to be using both on my lips and on my face as a cream blush. It is a very rich tone, but it's not a bright red. For eyeshadow, I have a Kaleidos Makeup Palette. This has all of the matte brown shades from different releases that Kaleidos has created. And I think I'll mainly be using the darkest of the tones, but I have multiple mattes that I can pull from as needed. I also grabbed a simple beige brulee from Wet n Wild as a base color to put down on my eyes. This is my go-to mascara of the moment heroin makes mascara and this is my lip liner this is a dark red lip liner from nyx that i will use to define out my lips for powder i pulled out the hourglass pressed finishing powder in diffused light i am going to be using this on my face as a setting powder along with a very subtle highlighter. The dancers in the painting have a very soft sheen to their face, so I'm going to be using that just to add a, the tiniest bit of glow on the top of my cheekbones and then to set my face overall. You'll also see the loose hourglass powder shown. I ended up not using this in the video, but I did pull it out in case I needed it. The dancers in the painting had thin but defined brows, so we have an eyebrow pencil from covergirl and a tinted brow gel from benefit to create the brows the smashbox 24 hour eye primer is my primer of choice at the moment i pulled out two eyeliners for this look a bronzy brown eyeliner and a black eyeliner the eye look to me was kind of black and brown so i wanted to have both on hand in case i needed them i think i ended up mixing the two on my eyes in the end and so these are all the products that I'm going to be using to create a makeup look inspired by Konstantin Razumov's painting, A Letter from My Bow. So when we started this project, Mia sent over a handful of, of paintings that she has in her library that she's inspired by. And I was drawn in initially by the colors and the just feeling of this painting. A Letter from My Bow by Konstantin Razumov. There was something so reminiscent to me of like impressionist paintings, like something from Degas or that general era. I'm showing my very superficial um, art history knowledge right now, but that's what it made me think of. And then 
I was searching for the artist name and for the painting name with the artist name and everything that was coming up was like source the sources were things like Tumblr. This painting has been tumbled and retumbled a lot, like a million times if I was being hyperbolic. It made me really question how I view art and how I kind of think of the community and think of the industry. I think of art as something from past ages, from from history, not of the moment, which is totally silly because I have friends who are artists who are making sculptures and painting canvases and drawing illustrations and doing digital art every single day. I am aware of that, yet discovering this, this painter that I was not aware of and feeling like it's coming from a bygone era of an artistic style, it really kind of shook me and it made me think about a couple of things about kind of consuming art these days and this is all from my like personal take on things. As I was saying, I kind of think about art in the past tense. I think about different movements within art and different names that had their moment of popularity, although their popularity often comes after their death. So it's not, it's not during their time living on earth. They're not able to savor their kind of moment in the sun. And maybe that's also why I think of things in the past, because that in the moment appreciation seems so rare. And it, it's confusing to me because I think of fashion and music and literature and uh, theater and all of these other mediums in a current sense, in a sense of like, let's check out what's going on here, what's happening there, what's on the runways. Like I think about them in the moment, what's happening today, February 5th, 2020. And yet I have this block of thinking about art, fine art in the same way. Yet I'm quite aware that artists are existing out there on social media, on the internet, in real life, and they are creating their fine art. And also they are incredibly accessible. And in a way I wanted to kind of talk about this almost as like a a PSA for myself and for others to remind people that while there are a lot of forms of art that feel so much more accessible to us and consumable, people are not thinking about how you can be accessible to fine art. There are artists that are selling their pieces on Instagram, through Etsy, through whatever third party site, and they are selling one of a kind pieces, you know, prints, all kinds of forms of their work at a range of prices. It makes me remember that if you do search, if you follow these people on social media, you actually have more opportunity to fill your home with special art and one of a kind pieces then I feel like we have any real grasp of. Like, you have that opportunity. I have no idea if this artist's work is accessible. I I doubt it is. I don't think it is. And that's not the point of, like, this kind of conversation because it is very much a conversation. This is me telling my take on this idea, and I would love to hear everyone else's thoughts. But just, just, like... I guess this is just a reminder to say that art is out there and available to you. Like there there are opportunities to own really special pieces of all different sizes and scales and fill your home with that and not feel like you have to sell your firstborn or choose between paying your bills this month and getting a piece of art. When you have those little bits of money to indulge, you know, think about that. Think about, could I support somebody whose work I believe in, whose humanity I believe in, in this moment? 
or could I indulge in like something from a home goods or a Marshalls or, or whatever that might be. In those moments, I I want to remind myself to like pick the artist. Um, I really recommend like diving into Instagram and Twitter and, and the internet and seeing what's out there because there are so many people creating amazing stuff and selling it at prices that... I mean, if I'm being completely honest, probably are undervaluing themselves as artists and as humans. And if I'm putting my money out into this system of capitalism that America thinks it's thriving at, but is actually like failing, failing hard with, I want to give my money to people that are kind of circumventing the traditional ways of capitalism and that are on the margins and that are creating in spite of and because of who they are what they've been through where they're from and it's really cool to just be like oh yeah this month I was able to like buy something from somebody that made it by hand and they felt it and I feel it every time I get to enjoy that piece of art in my house anyway I think that's everything This is not a cohesive finished thought. This is not a, like, this is my full essay and we're done. This is just an open-ended statement and a conversation. So if you have thoughts, if you have thoughts about the painting, about the makeup I did, about this idea of being able to support artists, even when you think that it's out of your reach, definitely share them in the comments. This video is not to judge how people spend their money and it's not me making any assumptions on how you spend your money whether you buy from Amazon or home goods or an independent artist or Trader Joe's or whatever you do with your money like that's it's not my business but it's a reminder for me more than anything that there are opportunities out there to support important special creative humans in the world and I do have that power and other people have that power too. And please do not forget to go check out Mia's video. I will have it linked in the description box. I'm so excited to see how she approaches this topic. And if you enjoyed this video and you would like to follow along with my colorful shenanigans, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. If you've already subscribed, thank you so very much. I appreciate every one of you. You make my days so special. Thank you to all my patrons. If you're interested in hearing more about my Patreon, it is linked in the description box as well. And to everyone, thank you so much for spending a bit of your day with me. I hope to see you again real soon. Bye, friends.